Hi everybody. Today we're going to take a look at the Divas species. These ants are quite the adventurers, thriving in a variety of environments, from bamboo groves and humid regions to mangroves and canopies. You can even spot them in semi-urban areas like parks and gardens up to 2,100 meters above sea level. These medium-sized golden ants are arboreal, meaning they live in the trees of Southeast Asia from Japan to North Australia. In Australia they prefer open savanna woodlands and swampy coastal plains. Here they build large multi-chambered nests from silk and carton among the branches and leaves of small trees and shrubs. Over in Okinawa, Japan, these industrious ants glue leaves together with larval silk to create their arboreal nests. Recently, they have been expanding their range northward on the island, though the reason for this population increase remains a mystery. And we all love a little mystery, right? So now, let's get to the part of what makes them so special. First off, Divas workers are usually between 6 and 8 mm long, while the queens are much larger, around 12 mm. They have this amazing metallic sheen with shiny yellow or silver bands on their large gaster, making them stand out from other polyrachis species. That is why we call them golden-tailed ants. Poly means many in ancient Greek and rachis means rich or spine. Their mesosoma or midsection has spines at the ends to help protect them from predators like reptiles. You can usually spot them by their dense silver hairs covering their entire body, especially on their gasters. These ants are monomorphic, meaning they generally look alike, but you'll notice slight size differences between generations. There are also light regional variations. Asian polyrachis divas have deeper notches on their heads and more curved spines compared to their Australian and New Guinean cousins. There are two subspecies, polyrachis divas belly and polyrachis divas rectispina, though their exact status is still up for debate. Polyrachis divas ants can have multiple queens in one colony. Imagine that, up to around 50 queens working together. This setup helps their colonies grow really big, sometimes even reaching tens of thousands of worker ants. This isn't something you see in all Polyrachis species, as many either have just a few queens or only one. Their super colonies can be packed with a vast number of workers and queens, making it tricky to estimate their exact population. Where does one nest end and the next one begin? Each nest can house anywhere from a few hundred to several tens of thousands of ants. They reproduce often within the same colony, but they can also fly away in pursuit of new genetic material. These ants are notorious for their aggressive behavior when threatened. While they lack stingers, they use a different classic defense mechanism. They can spray formic acid from an acetopore located at the rear of their abdomen. This trait is common among polyrachis ants, though the intensity and frequency of this behavior can vary. We read everywhere that this species is very aggressive and attacks anything that moves. But as you can see, this poor... poor... this porcellionitis pruinosis is not worried at all. Uh, try pronouncing that and let us know in the comments how it went. They consume food in quite impressive quantities, leaving quite the footprint on their ecosystem. Here we have an ant scout on her way to scavenge for food, or maybe get lucky with some live protein. She will lead her sisters to hunt and scavenge insects as they try to collect sugar-based food. They really ate this cricket to the bones, just the exoskeleton remains. We made a test with an indoor colony with organic honey. No surprises here, they loved it. Yummy! The nest is shaped in a globular structure with different debris used, including soil, small stones, plant matter and even animal feces. Polyrachis divis use this to create a mortar joining the foliage and twigs. This mortar is a sort of cardboard to bind leaves and other plant materials together, creating intricate and durable nests. Here, for example, observe how they strip this leaf from its softest parts. For some of them, they also use silk to shape the nest. In order to create silk, divas use their larvae just before they reach the pupation. This lady here is bringing the larva to a nest location which needs to be fixed and... Uh, never mind. 
While other polyrucker species also use silk, the complexity and scale of the nests built by Divis are particularly notable as their nests look like cardboard balls. Looks cozy, don't you think? This work requires less cooperation than Ocophila's weaving style, but they still have to collect more materials from the ground. And by the way, no polyrucker species are known to form chains with each other to manipulate the nest structure. That's a shame, because Ocophila living ladders are quite impressive to look at. Sadly, they had to adjust to us humans, building their nest from the best our society has to offer. Trash and abandoned structures. Let's go over a bit of their evolutionary history. Studies show that early Polyrhachis ants lived in trees and used larval silk to build nests. Over time, some species moved underground and stopped using silk. However, a few species went back to living in trees, but without using silk. Two species even used spider silk to build nests on rocks. Polyrhachis dodi and Polyrhachis pilosa. A study suggests that silk in Polyrhachis divis is unlikely to provide protection against parasites. The same goes for the carton they built. Hopefully you're still following along, unlike this one here. Alright then, just two more bits of info before we conclude the video. First, the Polyrhachis diva species has a relatively short life expectancy as a queen reaches only about 12 years. It's a lot for an insect, but it's not much in comparison to the Lacius queen, who can live for up to 30 years. The second piece of info is that Polyrhachis divis ants help to regulate pests on trees and are part of the Chinese pangolin diet, an endangered species, so just for that they are quite important. By the way, the last video we published was footage of Ecophila sparagdina, another weaver ant. We filmed it trying to find the best angles to get a look through their silk. Feel free to check it out. It's just above one minute and we put a lot of love in it. That's it for today. And as always, thank you for watching, subscribe to our channel to stay tuned and hit the bell to be sure not to miss our next films. And let us know if you have any suggestions for future videos.